Hey guys, welcome to your 8th Java game development tutorial, and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you about mouse input, and once we've learned about that, we can basically start to make our first game in Java, our first proper game. Um, so this is relatively simple, it's almost, apart from the names, it's almost exactly the same as keyboard input, so I'm just going to create a new project called game, make the main class main. and remove all of these generated comments always does that and then in your main I'm just going to create a new instance of my class now I'm going to pause the video whilst I make base our basic JFrame um okay done that the reason I paused it because uh, this is about mouse input tutorial not about uh, this if you if you're not sure what's going on here, I suggest you watch my uh, start from the beginning of my game making series. But anyway, now we're going to create a class to handle our mouse inputs. Public void, or no, sorry, public class. I'm just going to call it mouse. And that extends the mouse adapter. If you've watched my other tutorials, this is looking similar to the key adapter. And we need to import that. Come on, there we go. And now mouse adapter has, uh, qu the mouse input has quite a lot of built-in methods. Uh, at the moment we're just going to be using mouse pressed and mouse released. Uh, I'll go into more methods in detail a bit later, but for now we're just going to do public void mouse pressed and mouse event e. All, all, all very similar to the um, key listener uh, add override. Uh, in case you don't know what the override annotation means, it basically means when you're uh, programming a default Java method yourself, uh, you're just telling Java that you're overriding the default method and you're putting your own stuff in there. And just going to make another one public void mouse release key oops mouse event e and these do exactly what they say there's what has happened here there we go there is a mouse event sorry just tidying this up there we go we have mouse released and mouse pressed uh, now when the mouse is pressed on the screen this method is automatically called and gives it stores an x and y coordinate um, in a method and we're going to be <coughs> we're going to be accessing that x and y coordinate so in mouse pressed write int x coordinate is equal to e which is the event that happens when the mouse is pressed and get x very simple exactly the same for the y e dot get y uh, now what this does is when the mouse is pressed on the screen, uh, coordinate, it gets the x and y coordinates and stores them in these two variables. Now we can do something with this, so I'm just going to create the basic, where should I do it, I'll do it down here, basic paint method. Um, first I'm going to implement double buffering, so I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Um, Alright there. Um, uh, I've made my image and graphics, double bubble image, blah blah blah. If you don't know what's going on, then I suggest you watch my previous tutorials. Blah blah blah. Public void paint component graphics G. And now we're going to make an oval. G dot fill oval. And it's going to have coordinates x and y which we're going to make in a second and then it's going to be 15 by 15. Uh, now the reason we're going to make them x and y is because we want the ball to move to where the mouse is clicked. So up here we're going to make int x and y and in our constructor we're going to give them a default location x equals 15, y equals 15. Now back in our mouse method <clears throat> we're now going to set the x and y of the the x and y to the x coordinate of the mouse. X, yeah, that's right. Y equals y coordinate. There we go. Now, 
every time the mouse is pressed, it's going to store the X coordinate of where the mouse is pressed and the Y coordinate, and it's going to make the X and Y um, of the oval, which is here, it's going to make the X and Y the same point. And I'm going to do mm, plus 7 and plus 7, because then the click will be in the center of the mouse, of the center of the oval, rather, because um, 7, or well, 7.5 is half of 15, but we're working with integers, so anyway. Oh, and I forgot to do one thing, and that's repaint. There we go, now let's run. Oh wait, obviously, of course. Um, if you remember from the key tutorial, uh, the JFrame has a built-in method called add key listener. Uh, well, we're going to do basically like that, except we're adding a mouse listener, and that is equal to new mouse. And now our mouse adapter is all nicely set up, and our game can take mouse inputs. So now if you see, when we're clicking the mouse, um, oh, I just got that wrong. They should be minus, I believe. There we go. Now when we click our mouse, our ball appears nicely in the center of where the mouse is clicked. That's basic um, mouse movement. I'm just going to show you two others now, which is mouse entered and mouse exited. Public void mouse entered. And mouse entered and mouse exited, what they do is um, when the mouse Mouse entered is called when the mouse enters the game screen, and exited is, is called when it exits the game screen. Um, so we're going to display the coordinates of our oval with a string. We're going to say g dot draw string, and the coordinates will be say 150 by 150, and we're going to display coord with a colon and then open brackets and come out of the speech marks plus the x coordinate plus another string which will be a comma and a space then plus the y coordinate and then plus a closing bracket and we're just going to make this a red color there we go um, now we're only going to display the coordinates if the mouse is inside the screen. So I'm going to add an if statement saying if, and then we're going to make a, a boolean value. Boolean mouse on screen, and it doesn't need a default value. And in mouse entered, we're going to say mouse on screen equals true, and exited mouse on screen equals false. There we go. Um, and now if we write if mouse on screen, now this is only going to display if the mouse is on the screen. Now if we run, we can see that when the mouse is off the screen, no coordinates are displayed, and when we move the mouse on the screen, the coordinates appear, and they update with the mouse clicks. And off the screen they disappear, and on the screen they appear again. Uh, those were the basic mouse adapter functions. Uh, there are a lot more with the mouse since the mouse is more complex than the keyboard, but um, we'll be going into those later, and in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to begin making our first game implementing the key adapter, mouse adapter, and everything else we've learned so far. Uh, I'll also be going into more detail on threads because we haven't covered those much, and they are the essential part of games. Uh, but for now, practice this, practice mouse events um, and handling them. Uh, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.